Okay, so this is going to be my first uh, webinar. Um, basically, I'm going to take a, uh, some photos from a program called 3D Catch, which is an Autodesk program. Um, this is from uh, the website 123D.com. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of pictures um, through this program I've taken on my iPhone. You can also use your iPad. And once you take the photos, you can bring it into this program. It'll give you a 3D model. It'll stitch them all together to uh, make it a lot easier instead of starting from scratch. So as you see here, I have a, a, a 3D image that I was actually able to create with this program. You can see on the top there, there's some uh, issues with the model itself. It usually has to do with um, bad stitching or I didn't take the correct angle of the photos. You can kind of see on the program here where all the camera shots are taken from. Uh, so from here, I'm going to export this as a object file. I'm going to bring it down, yeah, object. I'm going to save it on my desktop so it's easy to find. Click save. On this program, you can either, uh, if you use your iPhone or iPod or iPad, um, you can only take about 40 pictures. If you use a normal camera and import it directly into the PC version, uh, you can do a lot more, which will give you a lot better quality of the model. Um, but what I'm looking for is just the top like I had in the original screen. Um, so I, I do like to check to make sure it's saved. It's right there up on top. Okay. So we're going to actually gonna go in now, um, open up Blender. Uh, which is also a free, D, free 3D program. Um, it's a pretty amazing tool for free, uh, for freeware. Um, I'm going to delete these guys. they just come on the screen every time you open it. I'm going to import my object file, uh, which I took from uh, 3D Catch. Um, they usually bring it in fairly large, so I'm going to scale it down. Uh, you see how it's kind of crooked on the, the map there. So I'm going to rotate it, uh, spin it around, I'm going to line it up uh, best I can in this program. The, the best idea is I want to be able to place the nose right on the center point. Uh, this is going to come in later when I actually create a, um, a tool path for it. I'm going to have to use multiple bits, like a larger rough passing bit, and then a uh, um, smaller finish pit, pit bit. So I want to be able to realign my zero point later on the actual material we're going to cut out of. So I'm going to use that point right there. So from here, uh, you can see on the top top there, uh, there's a big indent in his head. Uh, that's normally not there. So I'm going to go in and uh, fix that with uh, my sculpting tools. I'm going to come up here into the fill. I'm going to fill that in a little bit. bit stronger there. Going quick enough for me. Once you get the hang of this program, it's it's pretty amazing, um, especially for the fact that it's free. Uh, it's more of like a 3D animation, I, I, I believe. Um, so I'm going to go in here and get my smooth tool. Let's smooth it out. No, I want that. Uh, strength back there. You can kind of see how, how easy it is to actually go through and and clean up a model. The, the model I got from Catch was, was fairly decent. Uh, it's just a matter of clean, cleaning up that dent, some of the, the area around the, the head here. trying to fix these top pieces up here. They're uh, I'm actually going to take these and delete them here in a second. Go to my edit, 
go to my uh, um, wireframe. I'm just going to select this top area up here and I'm going to delete it. Uh, it. Looks like I just deleted a node inside there on accident. That's no big deal. Um, once we toolpath it from uh, the next software, it'll actually just uh, avoid that because the, the size of the hole is probably smaller than the bit. So if you look here, um, I only want a certain depth um, that, I'm, that I want to cut out. I don't want to have to dive all the way into the material or make that many passes. So I'm going to select this area and I'm just going to delete it. That's going to give me a nice flat bottom on it. Um, not too deep of an area to actually cut out. I'm going to shape the uh, shoulders out. You can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just cleaning up the model a little bit. And of course, you can you can get a lot more complex with this. And basically, I'm just I'm just making it simple. This is just a simple uh, 3D cutout. I turn it back onto my uh, solid model. As you can see, now I made it smaller. This has created the size that I that I want to actually cut out. And if you don't know this program that well, uh, there's a lot of um, webinars on this online. So right now I'm going to export it as an STL file. And this is going to be the software uh, Bobcad actually uh, recognizes the STL file and I can toolpath it from that point. I'm going to save it as rod STL. So now we're going into Bobcad. From here, I'm going to import my file or just open, go to all files, um, find my STL, open it up, and there you go. There is Rod um, all ready to go. And you see how that his nose is still on that zero point. Uh, that's that's going to be pretty important later. I'll show you in a couple seconds, a uh, couple minutes here. Um, so I'm going to go and create my stock. This is the actual area with that the toolpath is going to cut out. So I check my height, which is uh, 0.73. It, that, that's fine. I can probably go about an inch, inch and a half deep, but I'm going to just make a smaller, um, smaller cutout for now. Selecting my area. This is actually the toolpathing options. In the uh, training CDs uh, in Bobcat, it goes through some of the toolpathing options. Now I'm just setting my uh, bit speci uh, specifications. And I'm going to set my speeds. This is the actual speed at which uh, the tool is actually moving the router, the spindle. I'm going to go about 60 here. And then I, I usually go about half um, on the plunge rate. I'm not really sure if that's uh, accurate, but uh, that's just kind of a rule I use. Um, depth of cut, I'm going to go half the size of the bit. Um, step over, uh, I'll, I'll just say an eighth, so that's a quarter. Um, this gives you a you want to remove as much material as possible with that rough cut and uh, just makes it a lot easier when you actually come through with your final pass. There's probably a, a, a lot of different ways to do this but it's just what I've found uh, works the best. Then you see my uh, tool pathing in there. I'm going to do another one. This time I'm going to do a planar pass. I'm going to use the same bit. Um, basically just that idea of removing more material. I'd rather spend 10 minutes on it removing uh, material with a half inch bit than an hour trying to remove it with an eighth inch bit. So um, here I am putting my speeds in again. I can move a little bit faster because there's going to be less material. Now you can see it, uh, the line's going up vertically on the um, uh, model there. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to do another um, one more. I'm just going to do a planer, um, a slice planer. This time I'm going to be using uh, a smaller bit, which is going to be um, an eighth inch round nose. It gives you a little bit more, uh, a little bit better um, arcs and so forth on it, you know, on the angles. doesn't give you any kind of uh, flat edge cut, which you would get with a standard end mill. Here I'm going to put my speeds in. I can go uh, pretty fast with this because I removed a majority of the material. Actually, that's pretty slow. Um, that's all right. I'd rather take more time than to uh, 
break something or to uh, have to start again because of some issue. And change my step over to 0 0.02, just something I found works. I want to compute it. And there you go. Now you can see each each pass of each bit that that each bit is going to do. And it's pretty pretty neat when you can actually see what's going on and you can uh define what you want. So here I'm changing the actual machine type going down to uh Torchmate router um re revision 1. And that's just the machine I have. Um, this will obviously work with other machines if they support the post processor for it. Uh, this is where this the post comes in. I'm posting right now, which means it's going to write my G code for me, which is the uh, the language of the machine to tell it what to do, how to move. So there it is on the on the left there. I already saved it, so now I'm going to close all these guys, get out of a uh, all of this. So from here, I'm going to go into my driver software, which is what actually operates um, the machine. Um, basically converts the, the G code into actual moving components. So, um, oops, I don't know what happened there. Connect. Agree. I'm going to go open G code. I'll find my actual file here. There it is. So now you can see the actual each pass that uh, everything's going to do. So right now I'm, I'm actually there's three different uh, tool paths right now. So there's job one, job two, which should both be half inch um, bits. But now here I have um, where my where my bits going to change. So what I'm going to do is pause the machine, which is uh, M00 code for this specific uh, machine. Um, then I'm just going to put a little note into what bit I'm going to change it to, which uh, is my eighth inch bit. Um, from here, I'm going to put my G00 code back in, uh, which will make it start after I restart the program. So it'll it'll pause. I can uh, change the bit and then restart it from the same point. If you look, I can uh, change that to simulate. So now it'll go through and simulate what it's actually going to do. Now you can see it pause the program down on the bottom here. Um, it shows change a bit to eighth inch. You can get it to pop up, but uh, I, I can't really remember how to do that. I think it has quotation marks in it um, inside the, the brackets, the parentheses. So um, here I go, cutting it out. And then I got a couple clips. I don't know where my half inch video or the video of the half inch uh, bit went, but as you can see here, this is where I zeroed my, my um, machine out to. And this is where I'm I'm fairly positive the the nose is going to be on the um, on the block. So once I cut through that, it's going to take a majority of the material out. Uh, like I said, though, I I can't seem to find the video. Um, I must have deleted it on But here's a couple uh, shots um, of the finish bit coming through. As you can see, the step over is 0.02, and you can still see somewhat of a ridge on there, but. Uh, a small piece of sandpaper, or if you want to take twice the amount of time to cut it out, you can always change that step over to a .01. Um, well, here's about the end of it. Uh, I appreciate your time, and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just leave a comment in the bottom, and I will answer it if I can. All right, thank you.